Hello, welcome back. My name is Andy, and today I would like to review the book The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. I just finished this, and I would like to review it for you before I forget a lot about it. Um, it's a fantasy book, which is not a genre that I usually read, so um, I'm not sure how qualified I am to give a good review. But um, I did enjoy it. There were some things I really liked about it and some things that I felt um, I wasn't quite as crazy about. First of all, the thing I really enjoyed most was the fact that there were two strong women central to the story. Um, and the, the main character, the main woman, was very complex. She had strengths. She had self-doubt throughout the story. She was in charge of the mission. It that part of it I really liked and I really liked her character. I liked the way she confronted people, the way that she had these internal doubts that she kind of had to wrestle with, that she was kind of new to being the leader. So all of that I thought was really well done. The, uh, the other woman that's kind of central to the stories, you know, she's not the greatest. She's got, she's kind of bad. I like that part of it. I like the dynamic between the two main librarians in this, the two main investigators. I thought that was a good relationship, and I thought that was developed pretty well. Um, all the other peripheral characters, though, I felt weren't developed that well to the point where I actually had trouble telling them apart. So I don't know if I just wasn't paying that much attention or if, those, if that character development wasn't quite uh, as robust as like the main characters. Um, something else with fantasy novels that, um, like world building, I know that's a big part of it. And I felt that with this, that was a little thin. So I didn't really feel drawn into this environment or this world. I didn't understand the magic system. I didn't really, I didn't really get the different hierarchies of the librarians. I was kind of happy when I got to the end of the book and realized that it's the first book of the series. So that means that to me, maybe that purposely you'll learn more and more about this world as the series develops. So maybe that was um, kind of meant to be like a very sort of a thin introduction to this world and you're kind of drawn in and want to learn more about it. So that made me happy to see that it's the first book in a series. I probably won't continue reading the series, but I, I am glad that it is the first book in the series. Um, and, I, and like I said before, I'm just not a big fantasy reader, so I would I would recommend this probably to maybe young adults. And this, this could very well be a YA book. Again, I'm not really sure. This book's been on my shelf for a while, so I'm, I'm not even sure where I got it. And it, it's, it could very easily be a young adult book. But I would, I would recommend it maybe to that age group more than to others. I don't know. But um, I would like to say my favorite fantasy series of all time, Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Riders of Pern. That's back from like the 80s, 90s. To me, that was really robust world building where you felt like you were drawn in, you understood like the magic system, the hierarchy of dragons and their riders and that so when I when I read other fantasy books, I always compare them to kind of a, to that feeling I got and that I just didn't get that feeling with this. But it's a short, fun book to read. Again, it also felt very much like I could envision this as a television show or like a series. And I also think that I mean it was very plot driven, lots of action, and I also think this is kind of what's considered steampunk where it's Victorian with all these modern elements like flying machines and robots and then also there were mechanical crocodiles and alligators and vampires and werewolves and all, the, all these different magical elements. I So I did feel like this is probably what's meant by steampunk if it was ever made into a series and maybe it is. Maybe it's on Netflix somewhere. So I guess I'll wrap this up and say it's a light read definitely a day or two, probably fun to read, but it's not going to stick with you. And, um, that may, might draw you enough to read the rest of the series. So thanks for watching. Like and comment and subscribe. All right. Bye.